so we have four types of data structures which we will be covering in this video they are lists dictionaries tuples and sets so let's start with the list so this is the first data structure which we are covering list so lists are the mutable data structures that hold an ordered collection of elements so what does this mean whatever the sequence you will put for each value it will be constant the sequence will not change unless you replace a value it works same as that of an array in c c++ so list is a mutable data structure with ordered collection of elements it means now what is mutable mutable means changeable so the elements can be changed it can be updated and overall list will be affected we saw in the last video that strings do not get affected they are immutable but lists are mutable and this list data structure can be changed by changing a particular value in it so let's begin so in the first cell you can see i have put this square bracket and i have put 1 2 3 4 in so these are the four objects in order this order is constant now let's run this so 1 2 3 4 is printed now again if i do it for boolean values true true false false these values will be same as it is now let's define a student list with names a b and c let's say that there are three students a b and c and that list is being printed we can also find the length of a list by using this length function which is an inbuilt function of python so it will be printing three why because there are three names right let's say that these are the three names of the students so three is being printed the length of the list is being printed so this is a empty list let's say you want to run a program let's say you are working with a for loop and the values will be updated and you want to store each value in a list so initially you might want to have a empty list so this is how you can define an empty list okay obviously you will have to give it a, in a variable name let's say a equal to this blank list and then you can append every time within that a the value will be appended from empty list to whatever amount of values you want to put into it so let's say that we have a list prime ministers equal to this dr manmohan singh and pandit jawahar lal nehru so these are the two names initially i am putting in the prime ministers list so if i append shri narendra modi this will be the third value within the list now if i print the prime ministers so the prime ministers list is being updated right all the names are there now if i implement a pop function with it dot pop function what it does it prints the last value and also it removes it so similar to stacks in stacks we remove the top element right and it is also removed it is also printed so two things are done similarly if i use a pop function here shri narendra modi is being printed but it has been removed from the list now if you print the list now it will be not having this name and it will have only initial two names which we have initially so if i want to remove a particular value let's say i want to remove the first name so what i can do is i can use this dot remove function right dot remove function with exact value so if i do this the first name in the list will be removed in this case and only one name will be left so this is how we manipulate this now remember this if i write this who in foodie it means that this string is being tested to be in this one if it is matching it will print true else false in this case it will be true because foo is present in foodie now if i make a list of sunday and monday right days equal to list of sunday and monday now i want to check if sunday is available in days days is a list here so it will be true but with if i write sunday with capital s it is false why because capital s sunday is not available in days so it will be false similarly if you write saturday not in days now not in means obviously it should not be there so saturday was not in the list so it will be true sunday not in days false why because sunday was there in days list now mixed data types in list so list has this property that you can also keep the order but also you can use different types of data 
within the list. So I have an integer as well as I have a name, the string. So integer and string are together in this list. Now, ideally, list cannot be a variable name. So let's say I wanted to write this list as LAST list. Notice the color change. It means it is a predefined keyword. Instead, we will write something else. So my list equal to this and then printing the list. Now, if I change this value, my list first value at zero location to be 20, what will happen? So the values will be updated. Only the 10 will be updated to 20. And if now you print the list, it will have 20 and Sahilin. Okay. Now nesting in list, how to work with the nesting. So nest list can be 10, 20 and 30 and 20 are in itself a list. Now there are three values in this list. 10 and 20 are two individual integers. The third object in this list is 30 comma 40, which is a list in itself. Okay. Now if I define this. Now let's say that I'm writing this nest list two and one. So this looks like a 2D array, right? So this means that I have to reach this location two. It means 10, 20, and this 30, 40. So 30, 40 is two, right? And one means within this 30 is zero, 40 is one. So the output will be 40. So I hope you understood what is being told here. Moving ahead. Now let's talk about the index positions and the slicing. It applies for both the list and string. Let's see. Now let's say that Aaron man is equal to Aaron man as a string here. Within this, notice that the indexing starts from zero. If I want to print I in this, I will have to write Aaron man zero, right? Only I will be printed as it is. And then accordingly one to six. Okay. So if I write length of Aaron man, so this string has a length of seven. There are seven characters, right? The index might be from zero to six, but the length will be seven. Now, if I want to print Aaron man one, it means that within this, I was at zero location. One was R, you can see here also, right? So R will be printed in this case. Now let's understand this thing. If I write minus one, it means start from the end and move one location. So what will be the value? It will be N because Aaron man has N in the end. Similarly, if I want to print the sixth location, so it will be zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, again, N length of Aaron man was seven, seven minus one is six. So again, Aaron man six is N Aaron man minus seven, starting from the end, move seven locations, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you will be moving from N to eventually I of Aaron man. So I will be printed in this case. And Aaron man zero means I only the first value. So N, N, N and I, I. So these are the five values which are being printed. Okay, moving ahead. So let's say that I have this list of TV series, Flash, Arrow, Grey's Anatomy, Elementary and Sherlock. So let's work with this list with TV series names. So length is five, obviously. Now, if I want to print TV series zero, it will be the first name, right? So flash will be printed in this case. If I write TV series minus one, it means the first value starting from end. So it is Sherlock and minus two means elementary. Okay. Okay. Printing these, it should be flash, Sherlock and elementary, right? Moving ahead. If I want to print this one colon four, it means that start from one, including the one value, but till four, so you do not have to include the four, you, you have to keep it exclusive. So one, two, three will be printed. Okay, let's see one, two, three names. So this is one, this is two, and this is three. Okay, arrow, grace, anatomy, and elementary should be the output. Let's see. Okay, moving ahead again now, three to five. So include third, but exclude five. So three and four will be printed. So zero, one, two, three, and four. So elementary and Sherlock will be printed in this case. Aaron man, zero to three. It means within Aaron man, which was a string we had allocated initially. So capital I was the zero location, R O N. So I R O N zero, one, two, but not the three. So only I R O will be printed in this case. 
now if you do not want to give the starting value it will start from the first but it will go till this number excluding it so 0 1 2 again again iro will be printed right so within tv series also that list it is valid 0 1 2 the first three names of the tv series will be printed and in this case we have not given the ending value it means starting from 2 you have to go till end so Grey's Anatomy, Elementary and Sherlock will be printed. So if you want to print the full TV series list, you can put a colon without the starting and end value. The full TV series will be printed. Now 2 colon minus 2. So 2 is the starting point, 0, 1, 2. Okay. And minus 2 is the end point. Minus 2 means minus 1, minus 2. So this is the end point. Obviously, you, have, you do not have to include this. So only this name will be printed. Let's see. Only one name is being printed. Now moving to the second type of data structure, dictionaries. So this is unordered. So in this, we have to work with the key value pair. I will just show the example. But in this case, unordered collection is there. So even when you have allocated five, let's say five names in the dictionary with key and value, if you print the full dictionary, it is not guaranteed that the sequence will remain same while printing. That is creating the associations between the two pieces of data. So we will see that how this key value pair works. So let's say that Rohit Sharma has his jersey number as 45. So this is a key value pair and this Rohit Sharma is the key value is 45. And obviously value can be same. Let's say that this was a case of a food menu in a restaurant. So let's say this was a rupee. This, this was the price of a food. So 45 can be price of multiple things, right? So value can be duplicate, but key has to be unique. Okay. So key must be unique and value can be repeated. So let's generate this dictionary in which I have named it as Jersey number. I have taken four batsmen with their Jersey numbers as key value pair. So let's define it. Now, if I print this dictionary, this will be printed, right? So if I print the length of this dictionary now, it looks like eight values, but there are only four in dictionary because it is a key value pair. So key value is being considered as one. So length is four. So Jersey number of Rohit Sharma will be printed in this case. But now if I want to print jersey number of Yuvraj Singh, obviously this name is not in the list. So there will be error. Right. So what to do now? Jersey number Yuvraj Singh equal to 11. Right. Okay. So let's do this one. So this key value has been added to the dictionary. Now if you print it, dictionary will not retain the order, but there will be five names now. So MS Dhoni is the, at the top, but I did not put MS Dhoni at the top in the list. So initially this was at the fourth number, even here, this came first. So yeah, the order is not being maintained. It's okay. Now this has been added, but uh, let's say that I realized that you were asking Jersey number was not 11, it was 12. So to edit it, I can just write jersey number you were asking equal to 12. That value will be replaced. 11 will be replaced by 12. Now, if I print it, it will be showing the number as 12. Okay. So this is how the key value pairs can be manipulated. Now, if I pop MS Dhoni out of the list, so it will be removing that key value pair from the uh, dictionary. And it will also print the value not the key but only the value of that key now if i print the jersey num so these four names are there now now let's check of the presence of key within the dictionary so rohit sharma was in the dictionary so true now in the next two commands we are also again checking in and not in so Bumra was not in the jersey number. So Bumra in jersey number will give us false. But I have written Panja not in jersey number. It means it is true. Why? Because 
panda was not not in the dictionary so jersey num dot values now only the values will be printed okay and if you want to check if that value is there you can do it by using this jersey num dot values function so 45 is there so the answer will be true now let's move to the tuples so tuples means that it works like a list and it is immutable right immutable means it cannot be changed the sequence value will not be changed and even it even the value cannot be replaced so instead of square brackets you can use this round bracket to generate a tuple so t equal to 9 to 0 all the 10 values are there now because these are immutable if i want to replace the zeroth value if i give it a new it will give us error why because this does not support the assignment the assignment is not supported in this so the value cannot be replaced now let's move to the last data structure sets so these are the unordered set of unique elements so in curly brackets we have to give a set right so one two three it is printed as, as it is but in this case even if i have put the duplicate values in it then also it will give me only the unique values so this is how sets work only the unique values will be taken that's it thank you for listening that's all for data structures in python in next video we will be moving to the next topic the code of this exercise is given in the description the github link will be provided thank you